But no. if, if I can add maybe a small story. So Tell me. we IPO'd in uh, 2014. And when we IPO'd, I was on the, on the floor, you know, bought the first share in, in King, and, and, and the stock went down. So it's not the good, best experience of my life from that point of view. It was fun, but not the best experience. But what was the reason for that? The reason was that a lot of the investors were negative, and they were saying King had a massive success with Candy Crush Saga. Will they be able to come up with the next big game? And actually, the markets were wrong, because it's not just about the next big game. It's first of all, when you get a hit, is to actually really invest in that in that product, in that game, to keep it, make it better, better and better. So Candy Crush today is not anymore what Candy Crush was when we launched it. And we call it diversification, if you focus suddenly your re best resources on something else. Of course, you need to innovate, you need to keep investing in, in new stuff. But if you forget what you actually have created, it is magic, you need to double up on that. And that's exactly what we have done. And we've seen, for example, the revenues go up, uh, both in 17 versus the previous year, 18 versus the previous year. The audience go up in reach in, uh, in uh, the first, quarters of, first two quarters of this year again, and so on. Can I ask a question? Because I can barely see the audience here. Can I ask to the audience, basically ha uh, raising your hands, how many of you are uh, founders of tech companies? Woo! Uh, you guys rock. <laughs> so maybe a message to you. Um, we were never early. We were always late. We started on Facebook. We launched our first game on Facebook in uh, March 2011, but we really started cracking Facebook in September 11. But Facebook launched the App Store in 2007. Launched in the opening in 2000. They launched in 2004. So we were late. When we started, the biggest company there was Zynga. Uh, do you guys do you guys remember remember Zynga? Yeah. So they were number one. Uh, after a lot of work, we became number two. Uh, but the difference between us and Zynga was they were they had 80% market share. Everyone told us forget Facebook. It's too late. So we became number one. Uh, mobile. We launched the candy. We launched basically our first game on mobile. First successful game on mobile was in August 2012. We launched Candy Crush in November 2012. Again, they launched in 2007. So we were not the first. It's never too late. So if you have something which is really amazing, which is different, and that monetizes, then you can apply marketing to that slowly. You can build it out. It's never late. King gets a lot of credit for helping spread the freemium model throughout the App Store. Do you think it's still a valid model, and do you think it's, or is it going to fade away in time? I think that every time you put a door in front in front of your customers, you reduce the number of people who can who you can serve and who can stay with you. So we've believed from the very beginning in a freemium model. When we launched, when we started back in 2003 on the web, our games were already a freemium model, uh, but now with micro billings, it allows you to charge 99 cents. It's been took a completely different dimension and with mobile. So yes, we're big believers in it. I think it's there to stay. Uh, we have, and you can integrate many other models, like for example, advertising for those who don't pay, et cetera, et cetera. And your, your games have also upped the stakes because you, by adopting the saga idea, you've turned a simple game into a whole experience <coughs> from a user point of view. So you actually consider that you're delivering more value as the game evolves in time? Yeah, so basically our history is we started creating one level only games where you compete against others. And over time, we created more than 200 of these games. At some point, we got disrupted by Facebook because we were on the web. We were not on Facebook. We could not bring our model to Facebook. And then we re-engineered ourselves by taking the best games we developed over the years and creating a saga model, making many, many levels of the best games we had developed. Uh, so I think that also there, I think you never give up. And when there's an opportunity, you continue working on it. Um. When I was writing about apps for the New York Times, I used to get emails after my column, um, sometimes from very small app developer companies, saying that the mention had completely changed their sales profile. Um, do you think that the media's role in promoting apps is going to get more, more and more important or less and less important? Promoting apps. Yeah. I think it's less and less important because there are so many apps in the store that if you get promoted one day, the next time, the next day, there will be another app. Um, in fact, for us, we were when we launched Candy Crush, we were told that we would get a promotion. We were super happy. You know, the first time we launched the game, we thought the game would do really well. And then the day of the launch, we didn't get the promotion. <laughs> so we said, I was so angry. I was so angry. But in fact, we were so lucky that this happened 
because by not getting the promotion, we could really measure the impact of our, of our games, pure, without any third-party impact, and we could understand the impact of our marketing. And in fact, that allowed us to have very clean numbers that allowed us then to scale because we knew exactly the economics on a user basis. So no, my answer in brief is no. So if, you have, if there are some app developers out here, what three words of advice would you give to them, Ricardo? Um, I would say the first one is focus on really something new, on innovation. Be different. Every time you follow, it's a really tough and actually not a really fun, uh, fun job. And, uh, and also to hire the best, you need to have something which is really aspiring and new. And, uh, um, and the second advice is it's never late. Uh, and, and, and the third advice is create a culture where making mistakes is part of, you, of what you do. We continuously you know, make mistakes. Many, many games we create never see the light. So it has to be something really amazing. And then it has to monetize, then you are at the steering wheel. You can do marketing. Maybe 30 seconds, maybe one thing. I think for me, it's what you guys do is a mix of art and science. Without the art, you go nowhere. But without the science, you, get, you go, but probably not very far. So you have to mix understanding what you're saying, your customers, through really good BI, data intelligence. Uh, but data intelligence alone will, will not take you anywhere. So it's a combination of both. Great. Thanks very much, guys. And good luck in dominating the App Store in the future. <laughs>